James Hodgkinson, a 28-year-old trainee paramedic, went out with friends to a local pub after attending a cricket match in Nottingham, England, in July 2011. At the pub, an argument broke out between Hodgkinson and the heavily drunk Jacob Dunn, 19. Dunn struck Hodgkinson with a single punch, causing him to fall back and hit his head on the pavement. Hodgkinson suffered a fractured skull and brain hemorrhage and died of his injury nine days later. Jacob Dunn was tried for manslaughter and sentenced to two and a half years in prison. After 14 months of prison, Jacob was released on probation, but he had nowhere to go. His family had fallen apart and blamed him, and he blamed everyone but himself. He was homeless, jobless, unwanted, and hopeless. But all that changed with a simple question. And then, a couple of months later, after getting out of custody and being a completely, you know, no two ways about it, a horrible person, my probation officer came to me and said, Jacob, have you ever heard of restorative justice? And I was just like, no, what is it? Restorative justice is a program that seeks to mediate between victims and offenders to the advantage of all parties and society at large. The aim is for offenders to discover the harm they caused, learn to take responsibility for their actions, and change their ways. Victims play an active role in the process and seek answers to their burning questions, closure, and healing. For the first time, Jacob realized that he was not the victim. Well, up until then, I'd never even thought about the parents. They said they had a few questions to, to ask me, and um, I said that, well, my thought process was that the least that I can do in this situation is answer some of these questions that they have. As he learned of the depth of grief and loss he had inflicted, he experienced guilt and shame, emotions he had been trained to repel until then. Started to tell me a lot more um, about what they went through. And so they told me about what it was like sitting by their son on life support. They told me about what his funeral was like. I knew that I couldn't carry on going on the way that I was. But then after that, they started to ask me, but what are you doing with your life now? Mm. And that, that's what kind of took me back. I was like, like, how can they be interested in what I'm doing with my life? Do you know what I mean? And um, that just impacted me so much that it just spurred me on to think, like, OK, so what am I going to do with my life now to move forward in a positive way? Jacob thanked them for saving his life by guiding him from the abyss along a path of transformation to a productive life. On their part, James's parents were deeply comforted by receiving a personal and sincere apology and truthful answers to their agonizing questions. Seeing Jacob work hard to turn his life around was also a source of comfort. I mean, I just see him as a young lad that hit James, and as a man that sat next to me you know, he's grown up, he's, he's done so much in those last two or three years, and he's had to. If I can help him change things, and if we can get this message across, we can change it for other people. Jacob and his victim's mother now share podiums to bring greater awareness of the dangers posed by the negative attitudes that caused the tragedy of James's death. They teach responsibility and share an uplifting message of transformation from despair to repair.